Acts chapter 25, Numbers chapter 25. I want to talk to you this morning on what I call rechanneling the zeal of Phineas. Rechanneling the zeal of Phineas. It's an interesting story there. I'm going to read Numbers 25 from verse 1. While the Israelites were camped at Acacia Grove, some of the men defiled themselves by having sexual relations with local Moabite women. I'm reading the New Living Translation. These women invited them to attend sacrifices to their gods. So the Israelites feasted with them and worshipped the gods of Moab. In this way, Israel joined in the worship of Baal of Peor, causing the Lord's anger to blaze against his people. The Lord issued the following command to Moses. Seize all the ringleaders and execute them before the Lord in broad daylight, so his fierce anger will turn away from the people of Israel. So Moses ordered Israel's judges, Each of you must put to death the men under your authority who have joined in worshipping Baal or Peor. Just then, just then, somebody say just then. You, you see, when, <laughs> when iniquity and the spirit of rebellion enters uh, a place, even in the face of God's judgment, you could still have a just then. Uh, worshipping another god or stuff like that was considered a grievous offense against the God of Israel. Idolatry was punishable by death. Because God understands that the moment idolatry penetrates, it has the capacity to corrupt. So in this case, the people began to identify with local Moabite women, began to have sexual relations with them, and then because of that corruption, the Moabites invited them to worship other strange gods, and Israel went awry after other gods. In God's judgment, God said to Moses, the way we can cure this is for the ringleaders, you know, every rebellion has a ringleader. When rebellion comes in, it just has to come through a person, and then the person can channel it to other people. So God understands that if you want to cure rebellion, you must deal with the root of it. You cannot pamper rebellion. It has to be cured from the root. So in God's judgment, he said the ringleaders of this idolatrous rebellion against the God of Israel must be executed before the Lord in broad daylight. So his fierce anger will turn away from the people of Israel. Now, when Moses gave that order, right, the Bible says just then, just then, one of the Israelite men brought a Midianite woman into his tent, right before the eyes of Moses and of all the people. You see, when wrong is not quickly tackled, it can become audacious. You see, the, the, the LGBTQ stuff started from inside the bedroom. People used to be ashamed to talk about it. But because, you see, uh, we, we opened up the system so much that it became a conversation that could easily be held in public. And before you knew it, it became a legislation. Before you knew it, they are even saying, you can no longer talk about that which you know is right. It is that which is wrong that is now the normal narrative. When wrong is not executed from the foundation, it can become audacious. In the face of Moses and all the leaders of Israel, a man who saw the judgment of God now brought a Midianite woman. I remember when I was serving in uh, Oyo State, the campus that he's saying, there were 38 of us packed in one classroom with about uh, 16 or so bunks or 18 bunks, and there was no light in that room. And then I think the son of somebody, you know, Nigeria, the son of somebody, the rest of us, we are the sons of God, right? But the son of somebody came into the camp and they brought him into a, a separate room. That classroom had an adjacent, like a teacher's class, a small place. So they had a separate bunk for him there. And then they took the wire of electricity over the head of the 38 of us that were the sons of God. They took the wire into the separate room for the son of somebody and put a bulb there for him. And to make matters worse, this guy entered into the room, that I was the room leader, the guys told me later, that he did not even greet anybody. Because as far as he is concerned, they are nobodies, right? So he went into the room, 
He put on his light. He, they were even trying to use the infrared of his light to help themselves. He locked the door against them. And then in the evening, he now went out and brought a lady into the guy's room. Passed through the middle of the room and brought a lady in. So when I came into the room in the evening and they told me, I said, so what did you guys do about it? They said nothing. I said, that's how corruption will kill all of us in Nigeria. The moment we see it and we look away from it, it's going to continue to try. So the first thing I did was to disconnect the wire that carried, you know how your president said, his high tension, he has to be transported, right? The, the wire that transported the electricity over 38 people and gave it to one person, I disconnected it. And then he went to report to this, a soldier, and the soldier came. So I was having a conversation with the soldier. I said, tell me the law that says one person is greater than 38 people. That I'm going to bring up this conversation before the state coordinator of NYSC tomorrow. The guy now said, ah, there is no need. I said, there is a need. I know this is what Nigeria has turned to, but while I am here, it is not going to happen. So that night, they came to give us light. When evil is not tackled, it becomes a dangerous. Now, when the people were still under punishment, this guy went out, brought a woman, walked through the camp of Israel, say, all of you, happy punishment though. <laughs> but I want to do what I want to do. He brought a woman into the camp. Now, but that's not where I'm going this morning. Now, look at verse 7. When Phineas, son of Eleazar, and grandson of Aaron, the priest, saw this, he jumped up and left the assembly. He took a spear and rushed after the man into his tent. Phineas thrust the spear all the way through the man's body and into the woman's stomach so that the plague against the Israelites was stopped. But not before 24,000 people had died. That's like the case of someone saying, we can continue in sin and grace will abound. We can continue in lawlessness. Let nobody talk to us about it. Then the Lord said to Moses, I thought the Lord was going to be angry. The Lord said to Moses, because you must understand that the standard of man is not the standard of God. In fact, some of the things you will call an absurdity that you will say, oh, my brother and Lara, God will give him commendation for it. Because what God was teaching us here is not a validation of violence, it's a teaching on zeal. Phineas, God said to Moses in verse 10, Phineas, son of Eleazar and grandson of Aaron the priest, has turned away my anger from Israelites by being what? Zealous among them as I was. So Phineas became a standard in zeal. Ordinarily speaking, you will have considered what he did an absurdity, right? In your Canadian mind, you will have said, No, 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 you know, that's not right, right? But the God of Israel said, What he did was correct. What he did, in fact, God gave him a covenant of peace. He said, I'm making, normally God makes covenants after the time he made a covenant with Abraham, you know, for the generation of Israel. God doesn't really make covenant with individuals. Go and study your scriptures. God doesn't really make covenant with individuals. The covenant that he made with Abraham was for the world. Because he is the father of nations. The covenant that he made with Noah was for the generation of men. That he will no longer destroy the world with water. Now, in the case of a man being zealous for the house of God, for the cause of God, for a holy cause, God came and said, I am making a covenant of peace with him. And I will give him and his descendants a permanent right. Somebody say permanent right. I know you know permanent resident, but this one is permanent right. I'm going to give him a permanent right to the priesthood. Why? For his zeal for me. Somebody say his zeal for me. For his zeal for me is God. He purified the people of Israel, making them right with me. 
the Israelite man killed with the Midianite woman was named Zimri, son of Salu, the leader of a family from the tribe of Simon. The woman's name was Cosby. So be careful anywhere you meet Cosby. Amen? She was the daughter of Zor, the leader of a Midianite clan. You know, there are people you meet and by their name, you just know that this one is a no-go area. Cosby. Be aware of Cosby. Now, let's channel Phineas Z in the New Testament. Like I said, it's not a validation for violence, but there is such a thing that is called zeal. Somebody say zeal. zeal. You are saying it as if you are afraid. Somebody say zeal. zeal. The word zeal indicates fervent support for a cause. And if there is anything that is missing in Christianity, it is zealous Christians. There are Christians, but zealous Christians are very few. Christians who can stand against all odds, right? Because the possibility of a judgment against Phineas for what he had done existed. Are you aware of that? For every action, there is a reaction. He could have done that, and then the other men of Israel rise up and also kill him. Anything could have happened. But you see, the moment Phineas saw that absurdity that was being committed in the congregation of God's people, he couldn't stand it. Bible says he jumped up, he got up and said, we cannot continue like this. We cannot serve God effectively without the zeal of God. The zeal of God. Psalm 69 verse 9. For the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are falling upon me. How many of us have become, you know, polite, cosmopolitan, and nice, you know, but we, we cannot stand the reproach of Christ. I, I don't want people to say that my own is too much. I, I don't want people to say that I'm a fanatic. Have you had people say stuff like that? I, I don't want people to say that my own is too much. No, I just want... You are fake. Something is wrong with your Christianity. The moment your zeal dies, a critical part of your faith is becoming extinguished. It's becoming extinguished. That's one critical fire that must not die in the life of a believer. In Luke chapter 2 verse 49, Jesus was in the temple and his parents were looking for him. He answered them, why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? King James Version says, Didn't you know that I must be about my father's business? My father's business. The way to serve God is to particularize it, knowing that you are serving your father. Sometimes if we consider the men under whom we are serving God, do you know we will not serve God? I have determined, and I saw that a long time ago as a young Christian. That you cannot look at your pastor as the basis for serving the Lord. You may not even like his face. Are you aware of that? Yeah. You may not like his attitude. But you didn't come to church for a pastor. Right? I made up my mind a long time ago. Because if you want to look at what people do, have you had people say, I don't do church? Mm, yeah. Yeah, like, I do Jesus, but I don't do church. Because of what I have seen in church, the craziness, the absurdity, the jealousy, the envy, the strife, that all of those things are there. The fact that even people who are supposed to commend you can condemn you. The people who are supposed to appreciate you can begin to speak against you. I've seen all of that. If you look at that, you will never serve the Lord. You will never serve the Lord. The zeal of your heart at eating you. Zeal is that thing that does not allow you to look at people's face. It's a fervent. You don't care what anybody says. You don't care. This is what the Bible says. This is what the Holy Spirit says. I'm sure about it. I'm just going to do it. Because the judgment of God is different from what men think about. Or what men say. So I came to stir us up this morning. I know it's a cold part of the world. And you see, the temperature of a system has a capacity to change your temperature. So you cannot afford to be a thermometer reading the temperature of others. You must be a thermostat regulating your own temperature. Are you listening to me this morning? Yes, yeah, there will be discouraging things that want to kill your zeal. It's going to happen, I can promise you. If you stay long in church, in fact, the more you move to this side, this place, this side, trust me, you will feel it. 
So the devil knows that you are a dangerous person for as long as you sustain your zeal. So the more you stand up to serve the Lord, he's going to push things towards you to test that your zeal. And there are many people who started out burning for the Lord, burning and shining lights. But the more the devil tried them, their zeal died. I pray for you this morning, your zeal will not die. Amen. Let's stand to our feet and pray. And say, Lord, help me to be zealously affected for you in a good thing. Help me to stand for you even in this society. It's time to pray. Lord, let the fire of my zeal continue to burn at least. Let the fire of my zeal continue to burn for you, O oh God. Ah, let the fire of my zeal continue to burn for you. In the day when others compromise, in the day when it becomes normal to do what is against your will, let my zeal stand out for you, O oh God. Lord, in the days when men become lovers of themselves, help me to love you with all my life, with all my soul, with all my heart, with all my being. Be some of the prayers of God this morning. Say, Lord, help me to love you. Help me to love you every day of my life, irrespective of what people say, irrespective of what the society calls me. Lord, help me to love you. Help me to love you. Let my zeal for you burn brighter and brighter. In the name of Jesus, let my zeal for you burn brighter and brighter. Lord, in the name of Jesus, if you're looking for a man that is zealous for you, my generation, let it be me, O God. Call on my shatter, label cause Somebody ask the Lord for his help this morning and say, Lord, I refuse to be discouraged. I refuse to be tired. I refuse to be weary. I refuse to be cold. In the name of Jesus, help me to be zealous in my love for you. Help me to be zealous in my service to you. In the name of Jesus, my zeal will not die. I will not turn back from you. I will not turn away from you. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying.